Project LDJ. Hola. Aloha, Project LDJ. What do you have planned out for this show? Well, for this show, we're going to have the introduction of a little bit of vinyl signal. So we're just, this is our first little bits of signal that we're getting out from the control room. And today on our B-sides of vinyl, it'll be the John Keating Space Experiment. This is from like the 70s. And we're listening to Star Trek by Courage and Roddenberry. Thank you, Project LDJ. We are vinyl ready. Vinyl Here ready. Here we go, Houston. <laughs> Studios presents Rock and Talk. Our guests today, our quest for fire is Chad and Andrew. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. So, uh, gentlemen, let's uh, take a little time trip. We're going to go back uh, to South by Southwest, Austin, Texas. Yep. You guys return with Nebula, and uh, this is going to be some kind of story that you can tell us. How'd that go? Oh, it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, come on! It happened. It, it could have gone better, maybe. Yeah? Like we we could have actually played some of the shows so, <laughs> instead of rushing home on my credit card. Well, we actually felt we, well. We just pulled into Austin, and it's like we just were really just we were just parking, looking for food, and we found out as soon as we got there. As soon as we were as far <laughs> away as possible from home, oh, no. <laughs> like we get word that like yeah, that those two weeks of big shows for your drive home gone. <laughs> So yeah, so have fun. We had a great time in Austin. We like I managed to. I looked at my bank statements after and realized that I was burning through like five hundred dollars a day just on partying, which I shouldn't be doing. Yeah, we partied a little bit too. Yeah, we just we too really much. overcompensated for <laughs> the sadness of not having a tour to get home. It's okay. It makes for stories to tell. Good hey. memories. Yeah. We survived. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So even going back again in April, um, as far as I was. Uh, anticipating your um, appearance at the Roadburn Festival. Yeah. It's a good thing that, that that kind of didn't happen because there was a terrible um, volcano explosion yes. that stranded a whole bunch of people, oh, and, yeah. uh, including me, and it was, it was a disaster. So, um, not How the, long were you stranded there? Well, I was stranded for 10 days, but <laughs> then I thought, well, I'm so glad that Quest Fire wasn't stranded there because Sons of Otis was stranded there, and I was oh, really? stranded. It was terrible, but it was good well, in a way. It's it it was, I, I wouldn't <laughs> It's like, oh no, I can't go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> just party there for like another <laughs> 10 days. But That's going now into the future, you guys will actually be uh, at Roadburn 2011 in Barring April. Barring volcanoes. Barring any <laughs> natural disaster or unnatural um, intervention. So you guys will also be appearing with our fellow um, compatriots. Uh, blood ceremony. Yeah. Uh, I think Boy Vote as well, Black Mountain. Really? Uh, I yeah. believe so. Dead Meadow were doing it, apparently. Mm. Well, she was just speaking of Canadians. Oh. Yeah. Right. So, uh, how <laughs> you can believe that. <laughs> That's okay. And you're going to be touring as well. So, what's, yeah. what's the plan for April? Uh, we are going on a package tour with a band called Nam from Brooklyn, a band called Miraqueen from Manhattan, and the Atomic Bitch Wax. Right on. And uh, we're doing it on a bus. And uh, yeah, three weeks of shows in Europe. I think mostly German, like seven or eight German shows, then a couple of Swiss, Swiss dates, Austria, Paris, London, Rotterdam. It's yeah, like 20 shows in 21 days. It's going to be amazing. That's great. And, and Europe is smaller than Canada, so it's kind of compact and it's yeah. a little bit easier to. Uh, we might actually be able America. to walk around like different <laughs> cities for once instead of pulling into, you know, where do we go? Like, like Boston in the middle of the night and playing a show and then having to drive out of town immediately. And It'll be nice. Right. Ooh. <laughs> hey, isn't that home of Vicky? What? Vicky. Yeah. Yeah. Bad example. <laughs> Something actually happened there. So, uh, okay, Mel, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. The standard question on the show, if you guys were on Desert, Desert Island, what would be the album that you would take? Oh, shit. You should have, you should have warned work. us about that one. Come on. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> While you think about that, I'm going to show the viewing um, audience a new beautiful album and look at this and our DJ today project LDJ Jerry maybe you can spin us some tunes uh, it's fine yeah <laughs> Except for, uh, look at that that's orange that's class <laughs> <laughs> this is class this is class well we're going back to vinyl I see that like a lot of people are producing vinyl albums and yep. so what made you produce the uh, you know the orange uh, it's just as easy as any other color uh, it was the label's decision, but like I, everything, every band I've ever been in, I've been pretty adamant that everything come out on vinyl because awesome. it, it's less disposable than a CD, maybe. Yes. Yeah, I, don't know. I like it. 
Oh, I love that you can play backwards and get satanic messages. <laughs> 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 yeah, we have no satanic messages. <laughs> they were just playing. So, yeah, but anyway, like if you guys were, you know, um, well, if you don't have a classic Desert Island album, um, do you have any favorite new up and coming bands that you're listening to yourselves? Um, I like, <laughs> they're not up and coming, but this band called The Spits from Seattle, or maybe, the, I don't know where they're from, but uh, I think they're the greatest band in the world. They don't sound anything like us. They're just sort of a straight up punk band, but I think it's the greatest thing ever. It's awesome. super funny. And, I don't know, we just listen to a lot of comedy. Really? <laughs> yeah. What kind of comedy? Um, sort of like uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Let's <laughs> really? stand up in the van. Yeah, it's, it's the best way to travel. Like, it makes the, the drive between here and, you know, Montreal or wherever we end up, like, way more painless. It's not it's not an easy life. It's a very difficult life. And um, <laughs> you know, people think it's all fun and gay. It's, it's quite difficult. Yeah, sure. Having to eat snacks all day and listen to comedy <laughs> albums. <laughs> and we've, we've been dealt a bad hand. No, it's difficult. You, you're underestimating <laughs> the difficult uh, things that happen on the road. I understand that totally. Yeah, it's not um, easy to be drunk all this time. <laughs> okay, so uh, come, moving right along. You guys are recording some mm -hmm. new tunes, and I've seen you uh, gentlemen your wonderful band play for a number of years now, and um, I'm really always, always impressed when the new songs are a real step ahead and above and beyond, and they're so great. When do you anticipate your new um, recordings coming out so that people that haven't seen you live can actually hear them? Uh, well, we they're just, on your website now. Well, ahead. we just put, we put that new record out in, what, August or September? And we're right, starting to write a new one. I think we'll hopefully record in the late spring, like maybe May or so. Yeah, they're coming together pretty. The songs are starting to take shape a bit with just Andrew and I kind of trying to work a few ideas out. And then but we've been working you know, together long enough, like we've been playing the bands long enough that like it's it's become a fairly solid, like it's, it's easy to pull these things together. Like it's like the first record was a little shaky in the sense that like we were just sort of feeling out in a new band. But now that we've done this for a few years, it's all awesome to sailing. That's awesome. Okay. Um, with your sound, I don't know how I can personally describe it, but I find it very sort of psychedelic, kind of mournful, kind of really um, just something to zone out to. And you guys play with such intensity. The last show I saw I thought was your very best ever. Um, why don't you tell us what bands have influenced you with your sound? What did you grow up listening to? How do you see that your music evolved out of what you were, um, you know, how did, how did this I've been, part sound come out? Uh, there was never any sort of plan, like how we wanted to sound. Like, it was all just sort of like whatever happens, happens. I think we're all coming from totally different places. Like uh, I listened to a lot of like reggae. I listened to a lot of like, uh, like garage rock. Like we're just sort of all on different pages, but like pulling it all together, it all seems to make sense. Yeah, I think we're all, we're, you know, we're all at the point where we just wanted to make a band like this that's more suited to, like, our tastes throughout the years. Well, it's, I think that makes for a more interesting band, too, than having four guys that have the exact same record collection, you know? Like, it, it's, there's a few more surprises this way. Yeah, it's like cooking a recipe and your different unique ingredients are making a whole new recipe. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Kate, your band name, where did it come from? Did it come from the movie? Can any of you guys kindle sticks and make a fire from scratch? Totally. Do you have some sticks? <laughs> I do. I've got drumsticks. They were again. How much time do we have? Not much. <laughs> okay, so, gentlemen, um, Last, uh, last but not yeah. least, uh, your next show. Where can people see you uh, live <laughs> next time? Okay, well, I think it's at a place called the Steel Workers Hall. Yes. January fourteenth. January fourteenth with some other bands. Yes, in Toronto. Okay. I think it's on Cecil Street, but I might be wrong. I don't really know. It sounds like a union is kind of. I know the Commerce Party used to be on Cecil, and I was never. Okay. <laughs> Cecil Steel Workers. Oh jeez. <laughs> That's funny. But um, no, so like, okay, apart from that, you, can, yeah. you guys are going to be touring in April. Yes. And so uh, we look forward to seeing you in Europe. All your European fans would be great. Uh, it would be very happy and exciting for them to see you at the festival and so forth. And, um, excited to see them too. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be so great. You, you represent your country and our sound and everything. So cool. We'll do our best. Well, thanks for coming. Um, it's a short interview. That's our format. But thank you for, for joining us today. Thanks so and much. And if you would like to see Quest for Fire uh, and their 
their um, any other new tunes and so forth, they're on MySpace, um, MySpace forward slash Quest for Fire Band. And if you'd like to see future episodes of this show, you can tune in at www.pentagram666.com. Thanks for watching. And the show's uh, dedicated to uh, Steve, whose mouth I broke open yesterday with my snowboard. I'm sorry, Steve, we'll make it up to you. <laughs> hey, Jerry, take it away. <laughs> Closing it up now. And happy solstice. Happy solstice. It's the solstice. Here's my magic solstice rock. I've been holding it all night. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thanks Thank you so much. Do you want to go eat that? Yeah. Where do you go? Lahortica. Oh, Lahortica! My favorite place in the world. Oh my god. You gotta try Mecca too. Which one's Mecca? Mecca has a big um, wallpaper of the Kaaba. And then you can pretend that you're holding the Kaaba right at the Kaaba. Really? Yeah, it's cool. That's awesome. I'm also very sold on that. That's awesome. Thanks, guys.